sooner or later today. And it's a nice, relaxing way to, to you know, just have some pleasure. Bath is a very nice city. The council has been very good to us to let us have the field. And we must be pleased with that. They're also trying to organize a sub, but uh, they are doing their best. Well, as we have a quick look around the rally field, uh, may I add my welcome to the, the, people are just the chairman, having to the nice quiet, sort of rally, rally. They don't believe which took place that on we, we, the 5th people of June, enjoy themselves doing nothing. 1994. And then go home and sweat and polish and hunt for that part of the We're just scanning around there, yeah, looking at some this, of the markets as that. I speak. It's uh, quite interesting to see the sunshine that we have because the day before we had almost continuous rain until about six o'clock in the evening. Uh, we thought the rally would turn out to be a bit of a disaster, but luckily it stopped on the Saturday evening. Um, the rally site is quite well drained. And so as far as we were concerned, we had a very nice day for the rally. We're looking at the Messerschmitts lined up now. There weren't so many there this year because of course there was the big anniversary rally in Marburg in Germany, where a lot of Messerschmitt owners went. Now we're looking at the Heinkel Trojans. Again, not such a big percentage of them this year, because just a week or two before, the Heinkel Owners Club had their own rally at Tadpole Bridge. That also was dogged with a very rainy Saturday, but those of us who went there thoroughly enjoyed it. This year, 1994, was the first year that we officially opened the rally to classic motor scooters. And here you can see a few of them lined up. And we have a complete range of machines, Lambettas and Vespers, right through to Michael Letters, Heinkels, Piatti, Sun, Corgi, and so on. These were some modern scooters that were parked by visitors. Now we're having a <coughs> close up <coughs> excuse me, at some of the classic bikes. There must have been about 30 scooters there this year, which is quite good. We've, we've normally had a few um, scooters come along in any case, but uh, this year it was, there was a class for them and a world scooter. This unusual three-wheeled Lambretta was in fact uh, one of two that were made as prototypes in Italy as a rickshaw kind of vehicle with a bench seat along the front. Here we see a Vega, Lambretta Vega, Gatti and BSA. Here's a Sun, Wasp, a Galetta, Series 1 High, Lambretta RV and even earlier Lambrettas. The red one, of course, is the more modern one. Go back to the microcars, and this is the Isetta liner. Very famous microcar family there, who not only have a little bit of Isetta, but also a little bit of And this Isetta was at the rally last year. I see it's still carrying its German number plate. I think it is actually owned by someone in Britain. A couple of very smart Barclays, somewhat um, customised, not looking original, but a lot of Barclays changed their appeal over the years, not only with the body work styling, but with their engines as well. A few years ago I had a, an auto jumble stand here and one of the things I sold was that table with the umbrella. Nice to see it back again. This year we took our Talbot Talisman camper, the one on the right. My friend Alan Hillier with the VW camper, who very kindly took one of my scooters along. And other campers also packed up. And here we come to the Palm lineup. Winning 
Holland at the National last year. All the I've always laughed at the registration number of this car. I've seen it in many years at National Rallies, but it is a very good example of a Holland 875. Which I think itself is one of the most. Two bomb bugs. One in the foreground, I think it just come from a, a week's touring holiday in Wales. That's my Wesley Smith in the red one. Darker red one, I'm not too sure who owns. This light blue one used to be owned by Mike Cooper in the Bath Macro Car Club, but I think he sold it last year. And it's its first appearance this year at the rally under its new ownership. So we'd like to welcome back the dark green one on the end, who had been out of rallies for a couple of years, but now the owner has brought back to life again. Two Trojans from members of the Bristol Macro Car Club. Hard to believe that it was torrential rain on this site only the day before. You hear some very unusual scooters turning up. The first one, the black one, is a Micromobile, 197cc, fully enclosed, almost motorcycle-like in the fact that there is no flat football rod but a large build-up area between the driver's light knees. Followed by a Heinkel, a Nort scooter, and a Macaletta behind it. First of all, I've gone down to a corner of the rally where the, the mix were parked. I think mainly to see some people who also had micro machines. And today we're present with an issue spiders. Very smart Fiat 500, recently being restored, not completely restored, but well underway and looking very smart. This one is completely restored and also looks smart. I think won an award at the, at the rally. Both these two cars are owned by the Beale family of South Wales. And uh, again, award winners not only in the past but at this event. Here are the very famous NSU Spiders, which I think won the People's Choice Award. Very unusual AC Petite. This was in fact um, a disabled person's version of the AC Petite. Just passed by a Lumax and a, an open top of Frisky, which might be the only surviving example. And a very unusual three wheeler on the end whose make I can't remember, but I got a feeling it was. Um, it had three initials in its title. The micro scooter, the two micro scooters behind. As you can see, drawing a lot of attention. This micro mobile must be the middle 1950s in the region. Still looking very small. I don't know the story behind this bicycle, but it's certainly a very unusual one. We've seen running around the corner of the rally field. Here being driven by the driver of the ACT. In the background there we see some modern scooterists uh, departing the rally. They came early and had a good look around and then went on their way. At least one of those actually had a classic scooter, but most were more than Vespers.
There's a surprising number of local tourist scooters have survived over the years. They weren't very common, like in the 50s or 60s, but a greater proportion of those have survived, due no doubt to their very good engineering, and a lot of more common makes. The sport model's been very stylish. Back end of the BMW 700 Coupe. And back end of the Fiat 500. Here is a conventional lazy petite. Both of those are very rare vehicles today. Just the long radio area in the back of that Trojan. In the back of the blue metal smith, just on top of the rear mud guard, the owner had mounted two air horns, and this uh, took a lot of attention. People kneeling down and observing that looks like three air horns <laughs> with a sports silencer. I didn't hear them sounding during the day, but. No doubt it would have woken up any slumbering passenger in the back of the car. Two lovely little Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Of course, we own one ourselves, so that's the interest. Now this is a, a mid-1950s Reliant, which is quite rare, and in very good order. And there was also a, a rather rare 1960s uh, Regal in light blue, which I think we'll see in a few minutes. Now here, this BMW with MW on the registration, here was the arrival of Mike Webster, and as you would expect, he, his trailer has all sorts of interesting goodies. That's BGS, the prototype BSA Ladybird three-wheeler, a restored Barclay, and a roomy ant scooter. Now the entries are coming in. This bit of sunshine is doing us the world of good. We must thank Bristol City Council for the sunshine. I'm sure they must have arranged it. A couple more auto jumpers coming in. There's a very nice entry. I don't know if you've seen it. We've got a very nice trailer just like that. Two scooters on. I'm too much with cars. See how we mix up. Let's pick up. Let's each other again. That is something to like. In the engine style. It's going to be helpful. Capability. They are here in a class of, of car. Sometimes we are hard to describe the same cars that they were in the before. Very, very economical and used basically for back and forth work every day. The trailer in the background there, having on board a Mazetta and of course the Peel Trident. Now, I might be wrong on that, that might not be the Peel Trident, it's a Peel. It might be just the standard view because I think the trident will be more rounded. More conventional speed. Oh, yeah. It's a trident. You're right, isn't it? Yeah. Note the ease with which they lift the little wheel. Look at that. <laughs> Never had parking problems with that. Again, children seem to be particularly attracted by little vehicles. And everywhere this little car went, so little spectators were to be seen in abundance. Yeah. Hold on, 
That will be first handle just above the rear wheel. You simply lift the car up and spin it around as well. That's powered by a little DMW 50cc two stroke. I think a couple of years ago a brave soul actually drove one of these down through from Middle England right across to a rally in Germany. I think we're wearing out a set of tyres in, in the process. Now we look, up, look back up through the line of the scooters. Some wasp in front of the SA250 full stroke. And here's Mike Webster's Barclay being unhandled. Off the trailer. British made in spite of its name. Also made in Belgium in the late 1950s. And the license. engine that was used in the BSA Sunbeam motor scooter. It's a pity they didn't go ahead with the production because I think it would have sold well. Certainly well, if the weather was fine in any case, then no doubt the hood could well have been provided for inclement weather. There's just a little white spot on the front of the Ladybird's nose. This unfortunately was caused in transit to the rally where it was rubbing against a part of the Barclay that was on the same trailer. That put a blemish on its otherwise immaculate paintwork, which was a shame. Start as you can see, hand lever which is coupled through to the normal quick start button on the engine on the rear. Considerably with the weight, weight distribution, because as you know, the standard Vespa has its engine all on the right hand side, which is not ideal for weight distribution. The front tends to be so light. But have a guy on the sort of fuel actually located inside the spare wheel must be a great assistance for the front, just to stability. Get the vehicles off this car. Let's 
scoping over to the facility. That's the secretary of the boat is going to scoop the boat. We've got two scooters in here, the same and the same. selection of motor scooters and stored them safe so that back in the 80s and 90s when people were considering restoration he had a vast stock of them that people could choose from and he had some very rare scooters and yes you are yes you are yes you are this collection must run into the hundreds A few more scooters have arrived, but coming down the back, I think we're just going to see a man in a hobby. DKW version, I think it was the original, this is this light green one. Fully automatic, designed in the late 1950s. Years ahead of his time, but shunned by some people because of his spoke wheels. And not a true scooter, some people think. Today, you know, the modern scooter wheels are automatic and uh, tend to uh, have larger wheels. So this was many years ahead of his time. Very much underappreciated scooter. Here's the machine that changed scootering in Britain. Started its decline and the Honda stepped through it. All the advantages of that scooter. And then the Lovely, thank you. And over here you see a, a Brockhurst Corgi scooter. Colonus Club magazine. This is a view through the windscreen of our motor caravan. The vehicles to the background and the background on the right are belong to a fair which happened to be in progress at the same weekend close by the rally site.
rear end of the PSA Lady Bird. that became very popular were Lambetta LD. once more. Quite a variety of vehicles that were there this year. I think there were as many people looking at the scooters as, as we're looking at the microcars this year. It's certainly a growing hobby out of classic scooter restoration. We are going to the end of this day. Lots of new vehicles were coming along. Do you think 
just go to the other horse's side. 